Bad in Trinidad. Yo, yeah. Check, check. One, two, three, four. God damn it. Oh, hey, bad boy. You know how we crazy. <laughs> this is Birdie. And this is Barney. This is the Birdie and Barney show. Today, we have with us a 2001 and a 17 World Cup player. He represented Trinidad and Tobago at the men's national senior team level and beach soccer. Uh, Makan Islap. Hello, Makan. Good afternoon, everyone. All right, all right. And we also have our podcast, our co-host, Wayne Barney Shepard, on the other side of the world. Uh, is that a good or a bad thing? I don't know. Depends on if you're in right, Trinidad or right Taiwan. Now, right. Right now, the way all they're going, that's a real good thing. <laughs> that's a real good thing. Dance. Well, Barney, as you, as you say that, you, you say you're practicing Mandarin. What are you learning so far? You can say hello meow. at least. <laughs> meow? <laughs> I, I, I just said it. I just said it. I just said, I just said, hello. I just said hello. You just said hello. Meow. Yeah. You want me to say goodbye too? I know where I'm going with that. Go. We'll, we'll get that verified, eh, buddy? Don't feel me taking that just like that, eh? <laughs> yeah. you, you, you do your verification, brother. Uh, how, you, how, you do it. How, how it going so far? What? <laughs> I mean, <In> Mandarin? What? <laughs> Ma- Mandarin? Learning Mandarin? Taiwan on the whole. Oh, well, um, Taiwan, for me, um, consists of this room. <laughs> <laughs> I'm in quarantine since I arrived here Sunday. I landed 5.30 Sunday morning, Taiwanese time, which would have been 5.30 Saturday afternoon, Trinidad and Tobago time. I know you having problem with that whole time confusion <laughs> thing, so I've it for you, not for everybody else. Um, and I've been in quarantine since um, the room is comfortable. I have a view of a highway, an <laughs> overpass. You know you didn't a lot of space, Barney. Well, with my massive frame, you know, <laughs> with my massive five foot six frame, for people who have a lot of space to go on. for people who haven't been following, uh, Barney has a three year contract with Inter Taiwan FC. I, I got that pronunciation correct? No, 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 no. Not even no. close. Not Inter Tai, not not Inter Taiwan, Inter Taoyan. Okay, thank you, FC. Ta- yeah. I got the FC right. Yeah, get the <laughs> FC right. I need to get that part right. <laughs> Yeah, very good, very good. Second division in, 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 in Taiwan, we we, we we happy, we happy for him. Um, for those who don't know, Taiwan population, 23.57 million people. More than 20 times the size of Trinidad and Tobago. Buddy, why look at all of us? Why you look like you want to know what with us? I, I don't know what's at all. <laughs> anyway, since the onset of the pandemic... Taiwan has never had more than 23 infections in a single day. I sure you believe that's very impressive, Makan. Things, yeah, things. They still haven't. They still haven't. Not more than 20 in a single. They, have... they haven't had double figures since April 2020. Yeah. You know? <laughs> Leading the world. And, oh. and then oh. Barney touched down. <laughs> T- take, take it from there, Barney. How, 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 how Taiwan going since you touched down on the COVID front? Very nice place. Very <laughs> nice place. <laughs> nice place. Um, unfortunately, they have had a, a what they consider a spike here. Um, that was today's, today's Saturday. So that would have been Thursday. They had a spike of 16 cases. These are a few days um, after you arrived, right? They have a spike of 16 <laughs> cases. <laughs> um, and even even in, in that, it's been impressive to see the reaction of the authorities, um, the, the steps that they have taken to try to get a, a handle on this immediately. Mm-hmm. Um, so while I'm here, this is pre-spike. <laughs> um, <laughs> since I've touched down here, I have had to um, take uh, temperature tests at 9 p 9 a.m. and 2 p.m. uploaded to the to the um the national database. I've also had to take psychometric um questionnaires. How you score? them out. How you score on that? And uh, and and update them as well, indicating my health, my mental health, and that sort of thing. Um, since the spike, they have added another layer to that by now sending out a, a text message asking you to reply concerning um, your health. 
if you have any symptoms or anything like that. And added to that, you also get a call somewhere around 4 p.m., I believe, asking you, inquiring about your health again. Um, mm -hmm. So, you know, this is everybody who has come into the country is getting that sort of um, attention. Um, so it's, it's really impressive the steps that they've gone through to try to, to be on top of, of this whole this whole COVID situation um, and um, the thoroughness in which in which they they dealing with with things. Um, the, idea, the article that I shared with you, Lazana, yeah, that showed not only the number of cases, but they've gone as far as to list the name of every person who um, every one of the cases and also indicated um, where they've been and who, who they may, which area they've been in, so that people who may have been in those areas or may have come, in, come into contact with them could see about um, stepping forward to get tested. Mm -hmm. And without, without giving the name of the person, they're still able to give a lot more information. Yeah. Yeah. I'm interested in the yeah, psychometric yeah. test to um, money. I don't. I don't see any um, value of that <laughs> to what we do on this country. But it is like hold up a shape for you and ask you what you see. If it's either a cloud or a, a, a dolphin. Or, or no, that sounds like, sound like some sort of test that you had in the past. Something you want to discuss. <laughs> it's something you want to, you, you, you want to, you want to bring out. <laughs> this it, test here is simply, <clears throat> is simply about um, how you're feeling. Um, it's a multiple choice. You have options um, ranging from from um, they ask like if you feel <laughs> if you feel suicidal is one of the one of the questions. They're not, they're not very the subtle. They're from, not very subtle in Taiwan. No, they, uh, it, what I've come to realize is that it is a serious concern here, um, mm. and <clears throat> that stems from from me um, when I got here and having problems with the time zones in terms of sleeping. I asked the one of the club officials to bring to get some. Um, Sleeping tablets for me, and also some some uh, shaving cream <laughs> to deal with my afro. Yeah. Um, and the hotel was unwilling to allow the sleeping tablets up until they verified that the sleeping tablets were herbal, so they fucking overdose on it. And they refused. Um, they refused to send the, the shaving cream up at all, the mm. shaving gel. Um, but that didn't make sense to me. Because mm. I have a razor blade up here anyhow. So <laughs> ah, I, I didn't boy. understand the sense in that. Hey, friend, let's but, care this podcast. But, boy, search crew tomorrow. <laughs> <laughs> but but as you're thinking, also, I realized um, the other day that the, the window, uh, why, uh, why was the out? handle could no way to open? They actually installed a, a, a rivet to stop it from sliding. So you can't open the window either. Mm. I'm on the sixth floor, by the way. Yeah. I think all you could do from here if you jump is hurt yourself very badly. I don't think you can kill yourself, but uh, mm -hmm. still, they've they've blocked that. So that that's, that seems to be with the culture seems to be a serious um, concern. Mm. <clears throat> all right. Uh, another fun fact about uh, Taiwan, recognized by the United Nations as an authentic country since 1971, but China's position is mm, no, you're not. No, you're not. You're still with us. You know. Yeah, uh, it's like it's like it's, it's like the time you saw about that girlfriend you had before, <laughs> where she break up, where she break up with you, but you wasn't ready for her to break up. Kind of thing. I have no idea <laughs> what know. Barney, Miss Luan. I have no idea what what Barney is talking about right now. Let me just categorically say that. <laughs> that's how China. That, that's how China practically looks at Taiwan. <laughs> anyway, as, as we uh, might be a good time to talk about Trinidad and Tobago the relationship. Um, I always wondered, um, Macan. Uh, and and the the whole term sister island, you you, you all taught any feelings about that or any any issues? The sister island, the, the twin island, the public and thing. What what do you, what do you think about that term across in Tobago? Um, I think <coughs> that term in particular is a wookie one. It's just that in particular discussions when you're having the idea about sister island, many Tobagoans see it as do. <coughs> In the eyes of Trinidadians, Tobago is the lesser sister. Mm -hmm. And in that context, um, it isn't a pleasant one. But in general, when you're talking about the country and you say that it's a twin island state and with a sister isle, it's usually said in like tourism circles and it's a positive thing. But when mm -hmm. it comes to things like um, politics and so on, yeah. 
it's on a different shade where it is it seems as though like Tobago is kind of in sport as well. Mm -hmm. Tobago seems like the lesser of the islands when it comes to sister islands. What what so we better off saying um Twin Island Republic then? We say I think that would be, yeah, I think that everyone no one has any issues with that. All right, I think we just solve a, a major breakthrough there in, in relations between the two the two islands there. So we off to a good start. Um, you so you so caught up in yourself that you feel that people are going to take you on, right? <laughs> that's something. That's something. That's something that that Macan and um and others at at higher levels dealing with government. That's something that needs to be driven across the board. I I'm, to, I'm in total agreement with what you're saying there. Yeah? Um, and whilst we, you know, we we taking at, we're looking at it from, you know, a slightly jovial point of view, is something that that really I could see that really grating um, on rubbing Tobagonians the wrong way. Yeah, but we're yeah, making progress, yeah. man. You come in like Hezbollah, <laughs> to try to anyway. Go ahead, there, Macan. Way boy, look at <laughs> <Jesus>. <laughs> um, it is it is um, contentious in many areas, um, whereby. As a Tobagoian myself, whenever you see you enter into conversation about the relationship between Trinidad and Tobago, it's really, very rarely, it is, is it like a positive one in the sense that Trinidad relating to Tobago and Tobagoians relating to Trinidadian, it's always seen that like it's sort of a competition. Mm -hmm. And whenever Tobagoians like really try to talk about how Trinidadians view Tobagoians, it isn't in a pleasant light. And then in reverse, Tobagoians look at Trinidadians not in a favorable light as well. And it's so strange because we are the same country. And for me in particular, because I've lived in Trinidad for many years, and while I was living there, I never looked at Tobago in a negative light, and I never looked at Trinidad in a negative light. But living in Tobago, it's a topic for conversation the way Trinidadians behave towards Trinidad Tobagoans and vice versa. So. Mm -hmm. It's interesting. Yeah, yeah. I, I can't speak for everybody on this podcast, Makan. <laughs> I mean, personally. You can point your fingers. I call on him. <laughs> I won't point any fingers at anybody else who happened to be in this three-way conversation right now. But, um, you know, my my grandmother, you know, taught in Tobago, Elizabeth's College. And mm -hmm. um, so, essentially, um, once, twice a year, always be across, spend a, a month or two months in Tobago, do my little lessons and whatever, you know, so... I, I'm, you know, life outside of St. James kind of thing. I, I know the whole, the whole island, you know. Look how that man just going straight up my alley now, boy. <laughs> <laughs> so, 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 so my grand, yeah. a, 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 a good portion of my family is from today. <laughs> right? Watch out of um, today, the shepherds, go, boy. The, 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 sh the shepherds from Sherwood Park. Okay. That, that's my family. Sherwood Park, right? come so, um, by our remote. That is Patrick, that is Patrick and Steve and, and all of them. Mm -hmm. The Murray, the Murray's mm -hmm. right there too. You just my read right there because you just spoke like a Tobagoonian. I don't even speak like that. Whenever you talk to Tobagoonians, whenever you tell them your name, like let me say, I say um Devon Beard. They always oh, yeah. refer, refer to it like, like this. Oh, Beard, you did beard some Canaan, you did beard some here. Exactly. Beard some here. But, but so you're, never you're like that, real connected. But you think never speak like that. One, eh, brother? <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. You get you there. You win, you win, you win. <laughs> um, Lasana, Lasana, choose your choose your words carefully, please. <laughs> By the way, Makan, yeah, in a family get together, you ever mentioned to to, to Shaka that you actually the first sister to play in a World Cup? Because you know. <laughs> <laughs> no. It it's still said. You see those jobs that you two just be uh, <laughs> <laughs> Whenever I've interacted with Shaka, it's never been of that nature. It's yeah. usually pretty simple. And well, I, we can see the gentleman in the family is there, yeah, Barney. Because <laughs> <laughs> if it was the other way around. <laughs> I'm not getting dragged into this. Let me tell you something, I'm back at. We talked to Shaka up to today, and this man didn't even mention that he saved that to come to try to get you in trouble. <laughs> he got me to 21st punch. Yeah, that's the kind of fella he is. Don't, 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 don't drag me in that at all. 
So, so Bakan, let, let's go back to when you started now as a, as a young player in Tobago. What was your development like? You know, we, we, uh, uh, you saw we spoke to Bertil and so on in terms of how we groomed Dwight and some of those other players. How did you get your start in football? Well, um, I'm happy that you mentioned Bertil Sinclair. Um, mm. He was and is pivotal to youth development football-wise in Tobago. Um, so I came through the Bertil Sinclair coaching school. Mm -hmm. And myself and I heard him mention in his um, interview, Key and Daniel, mm -hmm. we were, I guess, two of the standouts in our age group. Mm -hmm. and, two, and I was, I'm thinking, I was like two years older than Kian. So when it came time to select persons for the national under 17 team, in those days, we had lots of football going on. Republic Bank, Soul City, Soul City and yeah, it was about the Clico competition. And there were a bunch of different competitions. So the St. Clair Coaching School team was playing in most of these competitions. And mm. in and around the time when they were selecting persons for screening for the under-17 World Cup team, our team was doing really well. Mm -hmm. I think about three or four players from that team got selected to go into the pool. And well, a few of us got selected on the final team. But that team was what that those competitions in and around that time mm -hmm. gave a lot of Tobagoans the opportunity to be seen by a national selection committee. And another thing to, to note, in those days, there was a scenario where there was a Tobago contingent training in Tobago, whilst the Trinidad contingent was training in Trinidad. So in Tobago, there was Mr. Tony Keat and uh, Mr. Duke that were involved with preparing the Tobago bunch. And I think what was happening, they would share the program between Trinidad and Tobago mm. so that the Tobago guys would be doing more or less the same things as the Trinidad guys. So when that selection, like when the team was, the selection team was going to Tobago, looking at Tobago young players, I was one of the players that was selected to join the Tobago contingent training in Tobago. Mm -hmm. And I joined the team actually pretty late, actually. I joined the team of, about a couple of months before they started to cut down to the final team. So a couple of months, you say, you know, how long that team was in, in training then? A long time, you know, because the guys who were training in the Tobago bunch before I joined mm -hmm. was the arrangement was that ever so often they would go down for like a weekend training camp whenever there was one. So mm -hmm. the Tobago contingent will come down and they would make arrangements for us to join a team and we'll train for that weekend and then we'll come back to Tobago to go back to school. Mm -hmm. So when I joined, it was about three or four months before they started cutting the team. So I would train with the team for about two months, and then they started trimming down. But it was really logistically difficult. I remember one training session, i never forget this. I was at home, and <laughs> this isn't um, trying to bring shame to the managers or anything. Hmm. And I was looking at the news, and I was seeing the team that they were calling, the team that was going into training. And my name was there, and I didn't even get a phone call or anything. So then I was just like, Okay, I guess I need to be in Trinidad this weekend. <laughs> <laughs> I just kind of went along and joined the session. And coming down to the few months before they started cutting the team, like I was one of the players that I guess was doing well. And I kept on, according to them, I missed the cut. Many players, when that cut happened, um, it was mm -hmm. hard for them. Yeah. So, so yeah, but that's basically it. I was playing in the competitions in Tobago. Then I got included in the Tobago batch. That had players like Michael Carrington, Devon Leacock, Roger Anthony, mm -hmm. uh, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. And um, we used to go down on weekends ever so often to train with the entire bunch. And um, I think Roger Anthony eventually was the, um, the, captain, the captain of the team as well. Yes, yes. Yeah. Barney, I know yeah. you want to ask Barney about the, um, the, the, the training to game ratio, right? Barney? <laughs> yeah, Barney, go on. I am. Uh, I write it. <laughs> you ain't going to write it. You ain't gonna to, to, no, we, we've been speaking um, before about that. Go ahead, Manny. No, because um, I think there's a different scenario, though. Because one thing, when um, Makan was talking there that, that um, I was taking note of is that the competitions served him, served the Tobagonians um, in a beneficial way, in that it allowed them to be seen. And this now fills the gap of proper scouting because we don't scout and it goes back to the same Trinidad Tobago thing. 
-hmm. We don't scout. So whilst playing all those competitions may not have been beneficial, it was actually beneficial in a different way for, for Mark and Andy because it allowed them to be seen. Mm -hmm. Because Maybe. without it, without it, we're not investing any money in, in, in proper scouting because like Tobago is in mm -hmm. Taiwan, right? right? So we're not investing any, any money in proper scouting. Although so it may have been a little bit different. It may have been a little bit better then than it is now. Yeah, it, 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 it was better, but it wasn't good. <laughs> let us not, <laughs> let us, let us don't get back with that. Mm -hmm. It was better. Anything better than now. <laughs> but it wasn't good. <laughs> but it wasn't good. Mark, and from on, on your side, what was it like for the players on, on the island, you know, trying to get a fair shake in, in, in national team selection? Because, I mean, of course, our most um, celebrated player of all time obviously came from Tobago. Well, um, I, I, I was born in St. James. <laughs> <laughs> but right, right from Tobago, right from Tobago. Yeah, all right, cool. Yeah. Um, let me agree with Barry this time. Um, in those days, it was better. And I think things has went backwards with regards to scouting for players in Tobago. But something that um, Barney said that's slow to me there, um, the competition gave Tobagoans an opportunity to be seen. But something else was in, is important to know there. Um, within recent times, how Tobagoans are seen, it's kind of a, you would get a Tobagoan, you'd put him on a, or you'd send him to Trinidad and he'd have to go play amongst Trinidadians and fit into that Trinidadian team. Even when they come to Tobago, it does usually be some sort of an all-star Tobago team that is put, put together mm -hmm. for screening purposes or they go bring up course. It's always this kind of situation, but in those competitions, the Tobagoan players, we were playing with our teams and we were playing the way that we play and we were able to perform the way we, like in Tobago, like on, I was playing with Bertil Sinclair coaching school. I wasn't playing with a Tobago all-star team. So mm -hmm. when I was playing, I was playing around players I'm familiar with. I was playing a system that I knew about how to play. So it gave me a better opportunity to perform well because of these elements instead of going to Trinidad. Because when I eventually started to travel to Trinidad, something used to happen where they would complain and say the Tobagoan players would try to play with each other as much as possible. And that is how they were able to shine a little bit more. And I think in one of your, um, in the interview with Shaka, mm. I think Barney said something that um, when the Tobagoan guys came on and they, they played for a few minutes and then he took them off. And then the, then the comment was that those guys just got picked. <laughs> the same thing happened. <laughs> with, with, um, with, with, our, with our bunch, because when we go to Trinidad, we would be there for two days, mm -hmm. Friday, Saturday, Friday, Saturday, Sunday. So coaches would need to see us like relatively quickly because it wouldn't be a weekend training camp. No, it would be a week long training camp, but just during the week, mm -hmm. the Trinidadians are there training every day, every day, yeah, every day. Yeah. And we would join in on like Friday evening. Don't worry, the band is grumbling and thing. You know? <laughs> <laughs> so one of, the, one of the challenges with the Tobagoan players, even now, having a look at the national team, is usually a sort of a rushed situation mm -hmm. whereby we have to fly to Trinidad. Um, typically, it's a weekend situation, and we have two days to get it right. Whereas, it, it, whereas the Trinidad boys have weeks or even months to, to, to impress the coach. And, and many yeah. times, the Trinidadian coaches would call in multiple training sessions in a month in two months, in three months, four, five, six different sessions. So players have chances to have a bad day, have a good day, have a in-between day, have a great day, show consistencies, play in different positions. Meanwhile, the Tobagoans would come down and have to get it right in three days. And it usually it, it does provide a challenge for Tobagoans. Besides the psychological impact of acclimatizing to a whole new different system, new players and new coach and all of that, it's sort of rushed and you just kind of have to just deal with that. And that's just the situation. And I think in those days, that situation where the Tobagoan group had an opportunity to train with each other and prepare and also do the kind of sessions that they were doing in Trinidad. So when it is that you eventually got to Trinidad, you had a little better transition to performing at that national team training level. Because when you're here in Tobago or at the grassroots level or with your club level, you may not be training at a national level. You may be training at your club level. Mm, makes sense. So when you're trying to make a national team, it is different. 
It is mm-hmm. very different. So I would love to see, I'm not saying that the old system is what I'm recommending. I'm just saying that I would love to see a situation that provides to big unions with an, a real opportunity to consistently have a look at the national team, not even selection and have mm-hmm. a, a, a reasonable opportunity to make the national team and to do more and do more. Because my experience has been playing pro football in Trinidad. Most times, whenever two big unions are on any of the different teams, they will be a standout player. So that should say something that Tobago has ability and has talent. It's just that, but when you look at two big unions representing the national team, it isn't all, it's always like a sprinkling. It's always like, mm-hmm. you would always hear on every national team, hey, that is Bego. You only have one player. And he gets be called <laughs> Bego. Yeah. And I just said, so mm-hmm. I would like to see that in place. Yeah. yeah. If, I could just, if I could just say something here. Mm-hmm. Um, that scenario that, that Makan just painted there, that is, that is the equivalent of, of players playing away games for a whole league season. Because the whole idea, I'm listening to him there, and that player has to be uncomfortable because you're, you're, you're coming in on a weekend and you have to play in this, this, this ground where if it's, it's a ground you probably play once in your life, if you played before, you never played. So it's like playing at a home, at an away game, right? Whilst all the other players are comfortable. The second thing I want to point out is this. Way, way back, just after the dinosaurs died, when I was playing <laughs> at, 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 that age, at that age group, right? And right, again, I I the right era there. Yeah, go ahead. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> I'm almost sure it's the right era. <laughs> um, and I'm not saying that it is perfect, but the scenario back then was that the five zones played one another. Yep, true. Tobago had their team. Yeah, yeah, it's true. So it was e- it was easy to identify the, the Bears and the Nelsons and, and, and the Hutchinsons, the Yorks, the whoever. It was easy to see them there because they were amongst their own and, and, and they could play. Right? Now the, the, the scenario we spoke about with the colleges eleven was different because it was a colleges eleven team and 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 they had to it was, it was during school time and they had to fly Dwight and Colvin over. And everybody knew before Dwight and Colvin came that it was nine other people walking <laughs> onto the field with Dwight and Colvin. Right? So, so that, that was totally different. But it, it, these things are not difficult to do. It just shows you. It shows you the... I don't want to use the word contempt, but as the word that's, that's coming to mind, and it shows you the <laughs> unwillingness, word there, Barney. The, yeah, the <laughs> narrow-mindedness <laughs> of administration after administration that you cannot see the simple things and the simple blocks to put in place. Have the teams training in the zones, and you get the best players from players performing amongst their peers in a comfortable environment. That's, that's logic. Yeah. Let me let me soften your words there a little bit. <laughs> thanks, 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 my card. Yeah, the way how I, <laughs> I um, articulate it is that it's usually an afterthought. Not necessarily it's an afterthought. So, Isn't that better, Barney? Uh, yeah. So, content, it, content. <laughs> <laughs> so it's more along the lines of the administrators in Trinidad, when they're making their arrangements, they would make the arrangement and they would really focus on the Trinidad scenario, the Trinidad logistics, the Trinidad like transport, um, uniform, so on, so on, so on. And then it'd be like, oh, by the way, Tobago. Mm-hmm. On the sea in my dictionary. That's what I thought. I, 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 I like you will go very far in life with that. You know how you like to articulate. <laughs> and I spoke to man. That that is lovely. I I reach a stage now where I I just don't care. <laughs> yeah, 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 it is what it is. You see it what I'm working with. You see what I'm working with here, Barney. Oh, I'm sorry, Makan. You see what I'm working with here. And Makan, yeah. when we go further in this conversation, I will tell you of something that I saw some years back that really crystallized how ridiculous this thing is for me. But we'll, we'll get to that. You, like, your experiences would uh, will tint your outlook on certain things. But the reason why I say afterthought, because that example I gave you with see Money Money TV, is as though somebody would have prepared the list. 
and they would have contacted people who had not contacted and like the Tobagoian side of it is like, oh shucks. More than once I would have come got to Trinidad and the bus driver forgot to pick us up by the airport because mm -hmm. they're custom making a different route yeah, but... to the yeah, to the sessions and yeah, like little things like that logistically where to do the logistics for Trinidad, it's easy because you it's in front of your face. But when you see you have to consider Tobago, it's like an afterthought that you're trying to fit it in into the Trinidad scenario. So it's like, I wouldn't say contempt is just as though it's like, oh gosh, we forget Tobago. Mm. Let me do something for Tobago now. Yeah. These are very good. This is a very good gentleman. Huh? He's, he's, <laughs> unlike, he's unlike the other Hesler. <laughs> <laughs> no, I'm not saying that there is no contempt there. That might be very well true and possible. But my experience has, it has always seemed like it's an afterthought. Mm. So you make arrangements. And even now, where I work and when things are happening in Trinidad, because I work in the Division of Sport, and we have a lot of programs and initiatives that include dealing with the national sports and governing bodies in Trinidad. And time and time and time again, when the arrangements are being made, <clears throat> the Tobago side of those arrangements, because you have that whole sea bridge, air bridge scenario, it isn't as locked in from way ahead for whatever is done way ahead. Mm -hmm. It isn't as locked in from way ahead as it is in Trinidad. You see shortcomings ever so often. Mm -hmm. is, you mentioned a little while back to Macan, um, the style of play that you are comfortable with. What would you say mm -hmm. would be the Tobagonian style as opposed to the, to the style uh, in Trinidad? Is there a difference? Yeah, it's for sure, for sure a difference. Um, Predominantly in Tobago, as you Trinidadians always seem to fear us so severely <laughs> when we come down. Um, how you big so? You from Tobago? <laughs> <laughs> it's a thing that is, is often said because I might be a good example because I'm pretty big and pretty strong, especially compared to the Trinidadians. So Tobagoian style of play often has a lot of physical elements to it, to it where it is that we have a lot of fast, strong, and persons with like very good individual ability. On the Trinidad side of things, no, you guys are a bit shifty and agile and tricky. That, that, you that, guys have that more... first word is so often that first word is fame. <laughs> 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 well, in football, in terms of trickery, is we, good. We, we hope it's football in terms of <laughs> Because, because it, 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 it's, 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 it's tricky daddy. It's tricky daddy. Kind of, <laughs> As you always say that, tricky, tricky daddy. But, um, it, works, it works because whenever you come across, like my, me playing a lot of football in Tobago and then in Trinidad and even like more recently in Tobago again, a lot of, I think, Trinidadian tactics sort of emphasize your strengths and covers your weakness. Most Trinidadian teams, typically, even on the field, you will hear people playing. The fellas too big and strong, but they're only eating provision in Tobago, and blah, 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 blah. <laughs> and they usually <laughs> emphasize the physical nature of the Tobagoian teams. Mm -hmm. And then now, in, on the reverse side, when you hear Tobagoian teams, because I played with Tobagoian teams recently and in the past, when Tobagoian teams play against Trinidadian teams, they would always focus on the dribbling ability and the, I wouldn't say shifty, the trickery, <laughs> the trickery of Trinidadians. So, um, just looking at it from a macro yeah. level. Well, I see that. But but is that still true in terms of the, the we don't really feel it to be going to that much again, you know, since, since fast food hits Scarborough, <laughs> to be honest. Well, we don't get that same power again in the tackle, you know? The that tackle gets a little softer, true. but... That is true. That is true because I watched, um, I think recently when Signal Hill came to Trinidad and they won the intercolor, I was watching the game and I was thinking, wow, like this Signal Hill team, I could scarcely look at it and be like, this is a physical team. Mm -hmm. They had a physical presence. They overpowered the opposing team. Was more of a kind of equal kind of scrap or like a kind of battle it wasn't as I knew it to be in the past. Typically in the past, whenever you see like a Tobago team approaching a Trinidadian team and a Tobago team starts to get physical, 
the Trinidadians would know where on the pitch come to physicality. They would have to mm-hmm. run around the Tobagoonians. Yeah. But nowadays, mm-hmm. like, it isn't that clear difference between physical ability. And I'm not sure if that means that Trinidadians are getting stronger or Tobagoonians are getting weaker. Nah, no, it's not the former. Not the former. <laughs> I, I think I... That, that KFC at branch in Scarborough, they're doing too much business. <laughs> even at even at club level, even um at Super League level, because I, I can remember coming over there with Queen's Park uh, mm-hmm. to play a couple of games, played against you with one. Mm-hmm. And um in that game, our keeper just insisted on showing how good you could be in the air <laughs> from clearances because <laughs> trade down the middle all the time. But, <laughs> but even, even then, um the the, the the physicality from the Tobago teams, as opposed to in past years. Like when I talk about better than them in past years, that, that is when you walk out on Shaw Park mm-hmm. to play against Signal Hill, but yeah. uh, you're, you're going with trepidation. Mm-hmm. You know, you know, this is not going to be a nice I'm, I'm, experience. I'm a, um, even if you beat them. Is Dun- Bertram Duncan it was? Duncan. Duncan, man. Man. Yeah. Oh, boy. Duncan T, man. Roger Groom. Um, yeah. Yeah. You some, know, some man you know, mountains. You, yeah, you yeah, know, yeah. Even, if, even if you win the game, it is not going to be a walk in the park. Mm-hmm. And um, and I watched us play some Super League games there. And the most difficult thing was the referee. <laughs> 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 but it's it's I did flame things again now. No, 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 and I always tell teams from school teams going over, when you are on the field, do not say anything. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. Do not say. It's a totally different type of referee in, as compared to in Trinidad. Eh? In Trinidad, the referee, you, you could shout, ref, gosh, man. Don't say that in Tobago, brother. Because, <laughs> because you're going to be, you're gonna be really. ending up right next to me on the bench. <laughs> and, and I trying to find out how it is you could be so sure <laughs> because we talk about that. So no, so that's what I was talking about. But even in those games, um, the physicality never, never came up. The yeah. Tobago, the Tobago team, I can't remember team, what was the name of the team you were playing with? It, Terry. Battle? I think Terry was the coach. Better United? Is, is, is Battle? Well, I was playing with Battle, but at some point... They had right, to... so... I, that that year Phoenix was another team, I think. Yeah. Can't remember. Well, they ended up beating us by one goal. Rain came down, I think, 3 2 or something like that. Look how much excuses but, but in one sentence. Never, now, boy. <laughs> the, game was, the game I had to squeeze it out. <laughs> the game was never physical. The game was never physical. The Tobago side was playing open football the same way the, the, um, the Trinidad side was playing. So that physicality, I think that might be a thing of the past, boy. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I think that, like, no, especially with when. Most of these players, they're always watching EPL and Spanish League and whatever, whatever and the Messi's and the Cristiano's and so on. So, you know, like long ago, like it's only now with Van Dyke you hear like of a celebrated defender in the mm-hmm. olden days. You hear about those Italian defenders, the, the great Italian defenders, and yeah. those were like household names, and right. they were known for being bruisers. And I remember, Burgundian. I used to get mm-hmm. yeah. Um, the different Italian. Maldini and all of them. Yeah. Yeah. And, Pierre, Tassati Pierre, and so on. Yeah. Pierre, and all these. Like, you would, people would celebrate the hard tackling, the no, mm-hmm. like Ramos and um, Van, Van Dyke. And that's basically it. But no, people more celebrate the more flighty feet kind of players, the Christian. So, a lot of Tobagoonians know. They, even if it is that they are big. I would see big, strong players trying to play flighty football. And they would be squinching from tackles and all of these kind of things. And mm-hmm. even like me, who I don't really try to play as physical anymore, I would be the most physical person on the team. And I'd be like, well, why? Mm-hmm. Why would you go into a tackle and pull out or 50-50 and all of this stuff and jump away from tackles? And when I was growing up, I didn't know about that. Because mm-hmm. if it is you came into me with a tackle, you were going to come second. 100% of the time, for sure. <laughs> and that, that was a thing. And like, no, that's no longer really a prominent part of the game in Tobago. So mm-hmm. I would say the, the difference in the Tobago style versus the Trinidadian style that you could easily recognize is, well, yeah, past, not so much so anymore. It was Tobago were, because Trinidadians looked at us as physical, 
So whenever we get physical, Trinidadians will start squinging and start playing kind of afraid. We would use that to our advantage and then we'd get physical and then we would have the upper hand. And then in reverse, mm -hmm. Trinidadians would know once they start moving the ball really quickly and running about the place quickly, they would get away from the big, burly Tobigunians. And, but now that's kind of changed and we just kind of have a kind of way it kind of brand now. Mm -hmm. So you're blaming, you're blaming it on prestige holders. That's what you're saying, <laughs> Rosanna. Yeah, yeah, prestige yeah, holders. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We definitely not going to get no sponsors on this show. You know. I, I, I. Makan, <laughs> <laughs> as you again, buddy, the, um, you know, Tobago and, and Trinidad in terms of making sure all our players and athletes and so on have a fair shot at the thing. And um, the, the Pro League hasn't had a Tobago team, of course, for a long time. You know, mm -hmm. Tobago United being the only the only representation. Um, I had to say, not very successful representation, but but you know, um, I mean, what is there even for for these for these boys after school? Because at least in in, in Trinidad, you you could let me say police, and and mm -hmm. here you have police and army would be two teams. You sure you're getting a salary if you mm -hmm. want to become you know. And then the other T connection and you know some teams that you know would, would pay you might run down the boss man sometimes, salary. but you sure you get your salary. Yeah? <laughs> 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 but I see they were two salary teams, and then then we went off into I didn't quite hear what you were saying. Anyway, you anyway. Wanna you, you wanna repeat for me? <laughs> anyway. <laughs> For, for the young players in, 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 in Tobago, you know, was it like after they finished school, the, the, I guess I remember Akil Holford and some of these more recent names and so on. What, what was it like? What, what did they have to, to look forward to? Well, I mean, many Tobagoans, even while they're in school, they just transfer to Trinidad schools. Mm. Just for what you just explained there. Yeah. But on the, on, the, on the Tobago scene, I like to think of Shane, it, it, Sandy, and Jai Shepard straight away there. Yeah, it, it, you know the guys, man. So, yeah. beyond top that... Player that... Top player that Shepard guy. <laughs> yeah. don't, don't mind him, Macan. Go ahead. <laughs> so, what is, like, one of the more prominent options for footballers leaving school is college, whereby they try to get some kind of scholarship or try to do that. If, if it's not that... The next option is to try to join a too big a Trinidad Pro League team. But the transition, as far as I can tell, isn't a seamless one. So if because this, this is actually what happened, part of the reason why I created the company I told you about. Mm -hmm. you to call, the union. You call the company name there for us. Is a 68 sport management. Okay. So hey, royalties there, no, but go ahead. <laughs> Mark on. Mark and you see and you see here and for yourself now. The man trying to claim eight six eight as his own. <laughs> wow. <laughs> so what was happening is that because a lot of people in the football in scene in Tobago would know me and would look like from different spaces, whether it be from the national team or the beach soccer team, which kind of grew to my grassroots thing here in Tobago. What they would do, they would come and be like, so Macan, if I wanted to get on the national team. How would I go about doing that? If I wanted to do this, how would I go about doing that? And then I would think to myself, there is no structure set up. There is no roadmap. There isn't, I can't say, do this, then this, then this, then that. And if you do it like in America, if you want to do anything, there's a very clear roadmap. Join this all-star team, come in the top 10, we get to the, com the combine and blah, 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 blah. There is some sort of a roadmap. Mm -hmm. But for the, for the two big one, yeah. How do you get onto a professional team mm -hmm. in Trinidad from Tobago? Yeah. You, have to, you kind of have to know somebody. Or how do you get onto a national team? There is no set standard or system for national selection as a Tobago yet. Yeah. Well, the other, yeah, and the other thing is um, it's it hard to pay rent when it don't want the salary coming. So <laughs> the, the Trinidadian player in his mother's house, he have an advantage, exactly. you know? But if you come in from outside and you have to pay your rent. Yes, I know all about that. <laughs> <laughs> because it's night time in Trinidad. Yeah. And I think I probably have a leg up because I have a more a propensity to the administrative side of things. I could negotiate. I could speak well. So when it is a coach called you in to negotiate a contract, I was better able to negotiate things like housing allowance and so on and so on and so on. And so, on. but for most to be unions, 
I have heard the horror stories. You mm-hmm. slap them in some house with two bedrooms and you have four guy guys in there sleeping who on the ground and mm-hmm. different scenarios like that. And these fellas getting paid some kind of a jokey salary. And I really wish if Shaka does, does listen to this, that Shaka his love's plan for the Football Players Association that he had attempted to really get going into Antibago. That would be a really vital thing to help protect players. Mm-hmm. Not just in Trinidad, but in Tobago as well, so that you create some standards. This is a standard way to go about this, doing this, doing that, doing that, and you have people to represent you. But as it stands right now, mm-hmm. yeah, that doesn't exist. That doesn't exist. Okay. So what I would like to see at some point that would I be transitioning, like for you, as you said, these kids leaving school, would I be a transitioning from high school into college, high school into a professional team in Trinidad, or even throughout your school years, there must be some sort of a system that is there that for Tobagonian players, if you want to get the opportunity to even be in the pool for the national team, there is something that you can follow. Mm-hmm. So instead of somebody coming to me by the barber shop, mm-hmm. hey, Makanoi, I, I always remember the story, um, um, Daryl Trim, mm-hmm. he was the leading goal scorer for Signal Hill the year that they won the Intercol. Mm-hmm. And so, the winning Intercol team for that year, the top goal scorer, leading striker for that team, he met me in a barber shop and he was saying, So, Macan Boy, how do you get onto the National Under 20 team? I was like, hmm. Really? Didn't you just win Intercol with Signal Hill? Mm-hmm. So, I was still in my head, I was saying, So, how many of that winning team? got called up for the National Under-20 training. And he told me none. Why is an Intercol champion reaching me in a Baba shop and asking me, um, how do I get onto a national team? In my mind, I know it, if St. Anthony is win Intercol, a minimum of eight of them is going to be in the national pool, minimum. Yeah. If QRMC win, for sure, you're going to see four, five, six of these players in the national if, training pool. If pool win? <laughs> <laughs> Who does he say that? It's QRC. It's St. Mary's uh, College, Wednesday Intercol. Presentations. Hold on, no. hold on. No. Wait, all right, cool. Let me keep the thing real now. Let me keep the thing real now. Let me keep the thing real now. Once upon a time now. Let me keep the thing real now. Really and truly, again, uh, you all you find, all you say how I can use contentious or how contentious <laughs> and say. But again, Again, if the playing field was level, mm-hmm. then uh, a Jai Shepherd's talent mm-hmm. in Speyside, in Scarborough, and wherever mm-hmm. would shine through mm-hmm. up to when he stops playing football. Even if that side not winning, that mm-hmm. boy talent would shine through. The same thing for, for this boy. There was a player who caught my eye in 2017 when we went across to play Signal Hill in Tobago. Um, the skipper Signal Hill. Number yeah, seven. I remember. Cannot remember his name. Yeah. Cannot Jimmy remember his name now. Short James. winger. He was on the Jimmy national James. team. What's his name? He is James. He is nah, James. it's not James. It's not James is the name. If you call the name for me, I'll, 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 I'll a winger. Jabari. Jabari. What's his surname? Is his surname I don't remember. Can't remember. But then yeah. he was he was the skipper signal and, and and he had to play a, a good portion of that season with a with a a groin injury, and that's why Signal Hill was kind of struggling down to that. Signal Hill got um relegated that year, I think. Mm-hmm. Um, and and that's he was the, the, the guy all the hopes were pinned on. He was the guy carrying the team from before he was a national player. Mm-hmm. I don't know where that youth is now. I do not know. <laughs> I do not know. <laughs> my little my little earthquake. <laughs> <laughs> Taiwan is known for a number of earthquakes. Especially in your room. Um, yes. Let me ask you guys this. No. I don't know where that guy is. And, and that that boy, mm. Frank. Is that something Frank was Nah, that's Akil, oh, Akil Frank. Akil Frank. Akil Frank. Yes. But, but not yes. him you're talking about. I think you're talking about Jabari, because no. Jabari was on the national team with but Latte No, 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 no. Oi, I'm talking about Akil Frank because I know the youth. I talk to the youth after the game. Mm-hmm. I, 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 I played that game. I, I, he played the year before and he impressed me. And he played that year. And I think that was his last year. He was in Form 6 or something like that. Mm-hmm. And, and my mean, point is, my point is, that little fella, the talent I saw in that boy, the speed, the, he wasn't the typical Tobago player as we were talking before. <laughs> he was 
he was a player that you could have taken from Trinidad back in my era and threw over there. And yeah, mm-hmm. quick, shifty. <laughs> <laughs> oh gosh, funny. Oh gosh. Uh, right? Let me ask you this, fellas. Um, so, uh, what could you, what, what you think could be a possible solution to this scenario? Because we've been talking about the contentious nature of how things happening, the transition from school football to other places. What do you think could be a solution? You guys, have, we are all around in sports. Yeah, we, we, fight yeah we be ha- we've been having this conversation. I would say um, if we strengthen the zones properly, right? So, zonal. Well. Zonal. So just like you said in, in, in your national youth team, you all had a kind of standardized training stuff that you were following, right? Mm-hmm. So if it, we have this, this one standard thing in all the zones, north, south, east, central, Tobago, so everybody doing the same thing, and then coaches. So in, in, instead of having a national team in training all the time, we let mm-hmm. the boys stay in the zone. We ensure that they're getting a particular quality training in the zone. And then they have the national coach moving around the zone and, if it, and pick up the players that way. That sounds very familiar to something um, Luke Lloyd and him was doing in the technical well, committee. I'll, I'll like not go and say yeah. that. Yeah. I'll not go and say that. That, that. that, unfortunately, that never came to fruition because that was one of the things when we had the technical meeting. That, mm-hmm. was, that was what was discussed and put forward for as the plan going forward. And I saw where that would bring back the same thing because from that now, you're wide, then you're poor. when you get well, exactly when you get the cream of the crop there then you could have the inter zones playing one another mm-hmm. right but you would have a, 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 a Tobago a boy on a Tobago team think about it a boy on a Tobago youth team would work into a curriculum work into the same thing to the, the, the Trinidad players the Tobago players work into that boy in his own element um Training, competing, playing is going to develop into a player just as anybody else in, in, in any of the other zones. Yeah, and right? I could say like the and, Eastern counties too. A boy like Colin Samuel and those kind of, they would have a little jam out there too. Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah. And and the thing about it is, in terms of cost, you, you cut out that whole air bridge thing because now when we when when we come, and, and it's not Tobago coming alone, the other teams come too. When that goes on, it's for a game. It's for a specific time on your back. Mm-hmm. And and you could have your teams training like that until, until let us say, we prepare for earthquake. But let us say we prepare <laughs> for a CONCACAF. <laughs> we prepare for a CONCACAF tournament or a CFU tournament. You could have your teams training like that until two or three months out. It might be even shorter than that. When you want to pull them together now, put them in camp and have them working, you know, as a unit. All your courts get cut down there, you know. Mm-hmm. But somehow I feel that is a particular is a particular type of rocket scientist <laughs> required <laughs> to handle football in Trinidad and Tobago. Mm-hmm. Because the That's logical right. things just don't seem so logical. Yes, because mm-hmm. what you said there, I've always I've always had that challenge whereby the amount of input needed to have a particular impact is so small in comparison to, because you usually think that to achieve something big or some big change, you need to have a big input now, like lots of money and lots of doing this. But to create some of these systems to improve the overall outcome, it doesn't take a lot of money, you know, it just takes a particular structure. But this is right. we put a structure in place and let the same kids and them who already operated with no structure, the same coaches and them who just kind of one doing this, one doing that, one doing this, one doing that. Um, just put a system in place, not money in a, a system in place. And what I would like to see, would I be through this discussion or any other discussion that at the end of it, a system is in place that in a holistic way or even heading towards a holistic way mm-hmm. improves the development of these young players, so the Akil Franks, the different persons and them, because you Jabari said Francis, Frank. I don't know, come to me. Jabari, Jabari Francis, not the yeah, guy yeah. from Skin Guy from Phoenix. Yeah, yeah, nice player. So, but Akil I Frank, know, is also, mm-hmm. go ahead. Akil Frank is also one of those names because um, I'm I am the president, of, I was the president of the Alumni Association, and Akil Frank came to me looking for advice about what to do with his life <laughs> because mm-hmm. he he considered going to Trinidad and he wanted to know if I could make a few phone calls for him. 
he was considering college, but he ain't sure what to do or how to do it. And it, it happens often, very often, but it's with me in particular, because persons would, I guess, think that I could make a phone call for them and make things happen. And I'm thinking, it shouldn't rely on a phone call. It shouldn't rely on mm -hmm. who you know. Mm -hmm. There should be something in place that, whether it is that the player is good enough or not, there should be a system that should be able to take the good players and take them to the national team, take them to a professional team, mm -hmm. give them the roadmap to college. And I hope that these kind of discussions with the right people who have the ability to make decisions to this, to be like, okay, then we're going to put this system in place. Yeah, because I would love to. Without that, yeah. you don't have a real system as, as, as Anulakan said today, you have a brand tub instead. You know, <laughs> you put your hand in, you don't know what, what come out, you know. Some people are happy with it, yeah. some people get nothing, you know, it not it would wouldn't be fair. Yeah. You know? And, yeah. and again, again, our pool is so small that a player the quality of Akil Frank that I saw in 2017, right? A player that quality mm -hmm. that we we don't have these fellas and them. Now I'm not saying that Akil Frank will go on to be a national standout. You know? mm -hmm. I'm not saying that. But I'm saying that he has to be given the opportunity to fail or succeed. Mm -hmm. And we have nothing in place for those guys. It, it, I hear you talking about the boy not sure about how to get to university and that sort of thing. These are the things that nag me. Because we are asking the boys to train every evening mm -hmm. for the schools, to go and represent the schools. And then we're not putting anything in place for them to benefit from that. A boy who is playing football in school. Is a boy who is giving up his time that he could have been using studying mm -hmm. to go and represent the school, and then is still asked to produce the same sort of marks as a normal student. Mm -hmm. And we're not putting things in place to help them. Yeah, because mm -hmm. nah, like eight or ten hours a week there, he putting into yeah, extracurricular activity, you know? Something very wrong with adults. But let me very, very, very wrong with adults. Who not, who not saying that? But let's find a solution to that. Like what I always like to do is identify the problem, but also push forward a solution. Not that the solution is going to fix it, you know, but at least the thought process is heading in the direction of improving the situation. And we, um, the, these, these solutions very easy, Maka. Now we talk about Akil Frank, for example. And I just I want to be on the boy name all the time, but we're using him as an example, right? Mm -hmm. He has represented Signal Hill. All right, he has rep represented Signal Hill. Signal Hill as a subset and the SSFL as a whole mm -hmm. is supposed to be helping Akil Frank go forward. Mm -hmm. He just spent his time representing that school with honor. Mm -hmm. Have you all at Signal Hill charted of course Akil okay? Um, you, you know, you they're supposed to be all right. Wendell Moore, <laughs> Signal Hill stand out. Mm -hmm. Wendell Moore, I know personally, tries to come back and, and, and organize for boys to get scholarships to go outside and that sort of thing. Signal mm -hmm. it's supposed to be something more formal. Mm -hmm. The schools that have is. these boys, the schools have these boys representing them. The schools have a responsibility to try to help them go forward. The SSFL has a responsibility to try to help the boys as well. Yeah. All right. And so it is, is no rocket science, it's no rocket science and it's nothing hard. It is just an unwillingness to look beyond <laughs> and go that step <laughs> No, uh, no, no. I, I used that word earlier on and I was like, <laughs> so I am saying it's unwillingness now. <laughs> no, but really and truly, really and truly. Wendell Moore doing that is Wendell Moore trying to give back. But what mm. signal he'll do it? And I know I'm going and get licks from family in Tobago and friends in Tobago. And then, I use the signal hill as no, an yeah, example. Yeah. In Taiwan right now, go brave, go brave. The carriage here. What? What? what, 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 what is the borders closed. What is, the carriage here. <laughs> what is Fatima doing? What is St. Mary's doing? What is Presentation doing? What is Naparima doing? Right? No. We, the schools, have to have something formally in place to help these boys. Now, I know Naparima, and I know for, for one that Naparima tries to help with, with those sort of things because they have called me in the past to try to connect with coaches and things in these but, but it cannot be just on I call you kind of thing. It has to be something. You play for the school, 
You have five or five passes or whatever. Listen, we now go in and organize to send out your videos and whatever to schools that 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 have the program that you want to study. We go and send schools your videos and and see what could happen. Something like that, as simple as that. Well, we hope to see more more. Um, now we have a, a new president, and um, we hope it's on the front burner. I remember a few years ago, um, Ronald Walcott writing on the a secondary school all star team. So this would have been 2017 or 2016 or something. And I realized, but wait, there are no Tobagonians on, on, on the list. And at that time, Akil Frank and so on was in the top thing. So I asked Ronald, how come? And he said that they said um, the Tobagonians can't come training. They, they said training at like, let's say, 4 o'clock. Thursday and at the Boland Stadium. <laughs> Tobagonians can't come. No problem. Pretty, pretty, and they just pick at teacher, no Tobagonians. And, and all they go down play on Sport team? Max. Sports Max, yeah. You serious? Serious, yeah. They set. So they, they, see, so they create, look how they create these zones, right? Until. <laughs> <laughs> so look how, they, look how they created these zones, right? It was like, um, there we say, East Tobago, North and South Central or some something like that. So they yeah, kind of split yeah, up the zones yeah. like that. And you yeah. want to find your way, essentially. That is it. Damn, boy. <laughs> so, so wait, 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 wait. I'm trying to understand something. So they had practice for 4 o'clock on that day, right? Yeah, like they had, let's say, three sessions to pick the team. Right. And it was just that. They are not, they're not organizing transport for the boys Fair for the boy. No. Sorry, for the boys to run from. No, they just say training is this time but at this is, place. But that is madness. Mm-hmm. And that passed <laughs> all that passed almost without comment. Yeah, that, that, that happens like let me just say, like, even in my time, nah, boy. I remember nah, boy. I remember at 15 years old, I had to go to the division of sport and youth affairs, talk to the different people, try to organize a purchase order. Because the national team is saying that they have traded in Trinidad X Y Z, but they don't have, they haven't booked air um, tickets for us, or they don't have the money, and we had to try to get myself down, and they might try to reimburse me and different things like that. And I don't know what purchase order is now, much less for 15 years old. But <laughs> <what's going on? laughs> well, in, we're getting government well, assistance. Well, let us learn they're, fast, boy. Yeah, cash in hand. We have a purchase order, yeah. and I remember. I had to go, and in those days, the director of sport was Mr. Granville, Peter Granville. Right. And I had to go see him and talk to him, and he had to go and try to arrange the thing and get the, the ticket for us to come down to Trinidad. And this is one of the times when we got to Trinidad, and I had to be calling the manager. I think it was Mr. Mohammed or um, the other one. And they was like, oh, shucks. The Maxi done passed. The airport already. We got sent back one for you. Mm-hmm. So we would be late to trade in for the first day and so on and so on and so on. So, mm-hmm. yeah. yeah, but I mean, solution. Oh, let's see how, how, how we nearly didn't get right here. You listen. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I, I, that, I always that, say that. If, if Dwight was wrong now, you know, he poor fella, but they, they would now, the future would but not have just now. Internet, isn't it? It's not just now. Oh, but the last McCann 10 years on the 2000, 2001 squad. Yeah. Mm-hmm. But I mean, McCann went down mm-hmm. to have a total national yeah. cap something at least. Huh? It, it, it's yeah. well, like, even rough. That 2001 team had lots of Tobinians in it. Roderick Anthony, Devon Leacock, myself, um, Shai Prescott. He had about, like about, coming on to the last final yeah. cut, he had about eight national, Michael Carrington, um, Paka, what is his name, boy? Karen, Karen Phillips. Right. Who made the final Phillips, as well. Yes, yes, yes. Karen Phillips, Michael Carrington. I mean, so... That's probably the last <laughs> team. That might have been the last team that, that, that Tobago had, had that so same chance. Yeah. That they yeah. had the same, the same chance to get into yeah. the team. So, um, and if it is going back to a zona scenario, is the, is the fix. Um, Lasana, you have a pretty prominent platform. Mm-hmm. And um, you have a voice that is heard nationally. Yes. So stay quiet, Barney. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> Got to you. No, no, no. no, no. What are you talking about? <laughs> no, listen, listen. When you hear Wild Eight Six Eight and Lasana Lightwood, he's been on many platforms, and he is a voice that you could say, "Okay, Lasana Lightwood has said X, so and so and so." So 
it's important that yeah. when we have these discussions that it not it doesn't just end here like so i would love to hear these conversations being had by persons at the ttfe um in all the different sports from the the pro league the super league mm. and all those different committees um I believe it might be a little bit of contempt, but I feel it's more so second thought with regards to these different circles, having a conversation to see like, how do we fit into our logistics, these issues? Mm -hmm. And as well as though, if people like yourself, including the um, vociferous Barney. <laughs> <laughs> if, if, if I go, if I, I'm um, ever in those meetings. It is better, you. Yeah. <laughs> you walk, you walk around because, matches and 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 kerosene and things. Yeah, and gasoline and things. <laughs> Remember earlier, earlier on in the conversation, I said that there was something that I saw that that led me to believe that the C word is the correct <laughs> word. Um, this would have been, whoa, boy, this would have been. About 15 years ago, mm -hmm. somewhere around that time, the whole method. But the national team was training. National senior team was training. Nash no, it wasn't senior team. It was the it was it was uh, the Olympic team or something like that. Whatever. Mm -hmm. They had three or four players from Tobago who came across the train. They had double sessions. So they are training in the morning and then they are training in the evening. And I went to watch the training. It was in Larry Gome Stadium. They train in the morning and training finish. Coach called the players in the talk. And then players went to the bathrooms, to the changing rooms and thing. And I was there talking and, thing. and players were leaving. And I saw three or four guys going up into the, into the seat in the, in the stadium there mm -hmm. to lie down on the chairs. You know how uncomfortable that would be. The yeah. stadium chairs you're trying to lie down. And I say, what them fellas and I'm doing there? And they say, yeah, they're the Tobago players. Hmm. And I say, so wait, they had to stay there until training this evening? Yeah. Hmm. That to me. Now, let that happen once, right? Let that happen once, and that's an afterthought. Mm -hmm. But that wasn't the first time it was happening. And it wasn't the last time it was happening. That can't be after. Yeah. And that that yeah. kind of thing. I don't even want to ask was it team manager because no, I, 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 you know, you know what? Luckily for me, I cannot remember. Yeah. I remember it was myself and Angus. It was it was myself and Angus went to the training, mm -hmm. went to watch the training, and I cannot remember. And I, I'm real glad I can't remember nothing else. That just burned in my memory that day because I've seen the other players driving off in the cars and thing and going, and these fellas had to sit down. Mm -hmm. These fellas had to walk out the road and try to get food and come back. Mm -hmm. And be there, and then be ready in the evening to perform just like everybody else. Mm -hmm. And we can't be serious. And I, I always have on the fact that our pool is so small. Mm -hmm. Them fellas had a real love football <laughs> and this country <laughs> to put itself through that mm -hmm. because I, I, I couldn't go through that. Mm -hmm. I couldn't go through that. So whilst you all may use the nice flurry and soft <laughs> flurry and soft term. That experience uh, has led me to believe is wanted. Mm, well. well, I mean, like, if people don't, because I have been in similar situations, but this is the thing, I would ask questions, I would challenge things, and I would request things. A lot of times, players don't feel empowered to do that. So mm -hmm. I know that I was in a similar situation, and because of me asking questions and requesting things and sort of demanding it. I remember that scenario you just spoke about, the fix was, as, and this is there, it's so simple, a phone call fixed that. After I complained and I made a rub about it, a phone call was made and that same day, that I came on for a weekend training, oh, tell him to go by Center of Excellence, um, he can stay in one of the rooms and MD. Right. A phone call. Mm -hmm. and. I guess I'm guessing they call Jack Warner or whatever, whatever, whatever. Yeah. and then like, bam! They gotta pay money now, though. Call. But yeah, bam! <laughs> I have a place to. <laughs> <laughs> so 
what I'm saying is that to fix a lot of these situations, it doesn't take some humongous effort or some big thing, you know. All it just takes is, okay, I can tell you, to begin with coming to Trinidad, you need airfare, ground transport, accommodation needs. That, that doesn't take rocket science. It's like anywhere, anytime somebody's traveling, these are the minimum requirements. Mm -hmm. Minimum. Mm -hmm. So if it is that somebody knows that to begin with that are involved, get a checklist. One, two, three, four. Let me take care of those four things and go from there. Yeah. But if I was one of those boys on the on the chair, somebody uncle was feeling it in that evening and said, sure, I could tell you that. Well, eh? That's happened too, you know. That's happened too. <laughs> I, I, I have been guilty of that a few times. <laughs> that's if you had the that, that's that's if you had the energy to go <laughs> somebody uncle after that. I mean that was that, that was ridiculous. Mm -hmm. Yeah. But um, one thing though, Makan, right? We we hmm. speak about Bertil and so on, but who has taken up the mantle in terms of um, you know, given kids the, the the basic foundation to be a footballer because you still need to have that before you can even talk about national team selection and everything. What well, was the football development on the island like these days? Well, um, I don't think anyone could realistically fill the shoes of Mr. Bertrand Sinclair. Realistically, I mean, mm. he, I believe, um, fit perfectly in the need in Tobago for youth development because he was the kind of benchmark for, well, he, he called it coaching schools, but in the other villages where he had like youth teams, he would call it like the, like, like Phoenix, he would have a Phoenix on a 12, on a 15, on a 18. Mm -hmm. And I think that became a requirement from the FA and the TTFA where each team playing whatever they needed to have like youth teams. Mm -hmm. So in Tobago, you don't really have established youth football development program however i have because that, seen, is, that is important right Barney? it is important it is important and um what what I've seen happening recently there's a group that i became involved with as well as other teams what would happen is different teams would put on little competition that have like you teams so you see like the eagles the uh whatever team yeah. this team will have a competition and that team will have a competition yeah. and what happens is Recently, a um, uh, former player from Tobago, from Lambo, he is now, I guess, one of the, I think he's a director in a footballing academy in New York or something like that. He developed this group called the Tobago Youth Football League, whereby the idea is to run a league every year for under 12s, under 15, 17, like all the different youth age groups. Yeah. And the idea was, or is, I'm not sure what's happening. It's kind of, everything kind of goes on with COVID. But previous to that, they had one year, they had three programs in the calendar year. One was the league, and then they were going to have like the scholarship program. And whereby, so they have all the different youth teams play in a league, and they have prizes and things. And this is an opportunity for them to be playing. Because think about it, what opportunities, and I think Bojo spoke about it, about the repetition. Mm -hmm. Where it is, you have to keep playing. Yeah, if you, with the training, you are, you're getting training, huh? You're getting training. You know so, all these kids at the different age groups with the different teams training, 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 but they're not really getting a league to play or a game to play. They had a hope that some other team puts on a one day or two days for a competition, something like that, and blah, blah, blah. And that's, that's the only game time they get. And then, I think one of you guys mentioned this as well. When you see teams going into that kind of situation, they're not trying all the players and them, they can pick the best team because they want to win. Yeah, and yeah. that kind of leaves the development of some of the old players kind of up in the air. But if you have a league and then you could mix and match players, play this one in this game, play this system in that game, every week you're having games and so on and so on and so on and so on and so on. So that is a one option to fill the void that Virgil Sinclair sort of left because he became the kind of hallmark for youth football development in Tobago. But it now isn't, that it isn't really happening in the same way. Yeah, it like it's not consistent because mm -hmm. with how it is like you go to school every Saturday and they'll have different competitions. But right now I would see one of the better organizers, one of the groups I see that at least trying to structure something 
to develop grassroots or youth football, for the Tobago Youth Football League. And there are a bunch of youth clubs, mm-hmm. um, Blasters, the Eagles, and these different coaches and different like um, teams mm-hmm. that developing or focusing on youth football. They're not really focusing on the senior team. They have mostly a youth contingent mm-hmm. and they're trying to develop that whole idea, but it isn't consistent. It isn't like, yeah. yeah. And I, I, would, I would love let to me, see that. Let, let me put you on this spot, Makan, because um, I'm, I'm here anyway with the, with, the, with the competition. I have, I have my belief. No, the players, players want to play and mm-hmm. players should be allowed to play. Mm-hmm. Um, young players, right? But the development has to take place, as Bertil spoke about, with repetition, repetition, repetition takes place in training. Now, mm-hmm. it makes no sense training and you have nothing to go to. So mm-hmm. you must have the competitions. Here we're putting you on the spot, though. Why hasn't the THA taken on that mantle as being a holistic uh, having, uh, as being the de facto person that is running a program in Tobago that allows for youth development, youth training, have coaches in the different parts of Tobago, paid, paid for by the THA, carrying out training sessions in different parts of the islands. And then from that, you have a competition. So let's say you have these coaches training the boys for a number of months, and then you have the competition at a particular time of the year. Um, does that exist? And if so, and if no, why not? Makan, before you start that answer, I know. The man I now had here and matches, and the kerosene he was holding. <laughs> I tell me to, but now he's yeah, He now hand you. So, I, so, so, I am smarter so, than that. So let me first of take all. Take it away, Makan. My disclaimer, my good sir. <laughs> I, um, I can, I, I will not in no way, shape, or form speak on behalf of the THA. <laughs> so, let me say that, and then let me give you my diplomatic answer because I do work in the division of sport. My good sir, this is, this is the official diplomatic answer. The entity responsible for football and development of football in Tobago is the TFA. That's the... Um, uh, recognize authority for football in Tobago. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. I would just let you know, even for my short stint there as president, there is facilities within the organization for youth development. And what you just said there fits into that whole section of the TFE. The THA is not so much so a, in its current structure, not just regards to sport, but in all the different realms, tourism, agriculture, blah, 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 blah. They are more like facilitators to help the actual people do what they need to do. So with regards to sport, the the THA at that operational level has to work through the TFA. So so if the TFA comes to you all then with a with a good idea. (laughs) Are they all over that? Like gravy. You can't, so my, my, you can't get me to <laughs> Yeah, because my, my thing is this. Well, let, let me see. Hold on, hold on, hold on. Uh, no. All right. Hold on, before you go and try to... Let, 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 let me hold my flame. My hold on, hold on. Hold on. <laughs> the Division of Sport and Youth Affairs have different initiatives and different programs that are cater to um, sport on the island. No, these initiatives and programs do not replace the authority for the different associations in in Tobago. It's just the division has particular mandates and particular responsibilities, and we have programs that are tailored around those. Not saying that we cannot do more or more isn't possible. However, there are programs. Every year they have um, district games where they try to, they not, as far as I can tell, some of the programs we have at the Division of Sport, it isn't necessarily catered to what you're asking about that developmental program, that grassroots program, and these satellite projects and so on. That sounds more like a page out of that technical committee um, development program that you, you were talking about earlier. There are different programs run directly by the... Let me be specific. THA is the entire... <laughs> <laughs> 
THA have division of agriculture, division of this. Get the whole brush here, man. Get the whole brush here. Yeah, try me up now. Next thing you know, I get some kind of conversations in the world. No, no, no. I'm not, no. Trying, to be, I'm not trying to do that at all. <laughs> I don't so, know, I don't know, I don't know. so the division of sport and youth affairs who have like different programs. Man, ever walk for in Thai? One in Oma can go brave, you know. <laughs> <laughs> so the division have different programs that they run, and it does different things. Not what you're speaking about. What right? If it is that the TFA were to put forward in their proposal that they usually send in. All the associations have a relationship with the Division of Sports and Youth Affairs because they are stakeholders in our operations. And if it is that any of these stakeholders, not just football, any of the other sporting disciplines that have a presence in Tobago and have an association or something like that, they usually have um, different ways they interact with the division. One possibility is that what you just suggested could be put forward to the division for support with that kind of a program, but it should be done by the authority for that particular sport. Mm-hmm. I hear you there, right? <laughs> so, the man come for good, Barney. Take him on. No, hear what I have to say now, and I hope anybody who views this, listens to this, knows that um, this has nothing to do. But Mark and Hitflop doing this, there's me <laughs> saying this, right? <laughs> I have absolutely zero faith in administration in Trinidad and Tobago from since when I was playing. So no. Right? Mm. Um, my point is this. There's room for improvement. No, he's not <laughs> right. I'm, I'm, and I'm talking, I'm speaking specifically to administration from TTFA. I, I, I've known nothing about TFA, right? But in listening to you there, right? Mm. It sounds to me that TFA is really part of TTFA, right? <laughs> and, and, and we cannot, we cannot, we can no longer rely on the football, on the FA to be the ones coming up with the ideas. They have proven over time that they are incapable of setting out a measurable... Oh, gosh. <laughs> 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 they've, proven, they've proven that they are unable to, to set out a, a measurable strategic plan for the development of football in Trinidad. Football in Trinidad and Tobago altogether. So what I'm saying is, you, Maka who you have played at, 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 you know, at very high levels, at almost the highest level, if not the highest level, the highest level is in a World Cup, senior World Cup. So, Shaka had that on it. But <laughs> you, um, let me just say you. Let me say this. The, the, the THA mm-hmm. should look at, at their island, should look at what their island is, is lacking mm-hmm. for their youths in terms of development and go to the TFA and say, listen, what are your plans for development at youth level? Okay, you have none. What about if we do this? We can provide X amount of funding or say nothing and let them come up with a plan and tell you how much is required and say, well, then we could only provide this. But something, but we can't leave this up to these people. These people have proven, and my friends in Tobago are, are, are talking here. When I say, when I say these people, Your family. I'm talking about yeah, the yeah. FA. Yeah, the shepherd is on show. Yeah. The shepherd is on show. Yeah, leave they're, them. They're losing some. They're losing some. But go ahead. No, leave, leave the shepherd and show it back and have space. I leave them. But, but um, no, but we, we cannot. We, we, these people, they're not doing it. So let us, and by us are saying, Ministry of Sport, the THA, these people, let us then say to the FAs, listen, be thinking about the development of the youth, what you're doing. Somebody had to be held accountable for the... I, I agree with you, but you just use this strong language. Let me, let me check it in. I will say what you said here. Um, I do agree with you in the sense that government officials who have as much authority or even more authority with regards to how these different sporting organizations operate, especially because I know in Tobago for sure, 
and I'm sure which is like in Trinidad, uh, the lion's share of funding that goes to these different entities comes from the government. So Trinidad I different. do. What's that? Trinidad different. Okay. Yeah, yeah once but you want Infantino good, yes, tell the government <laughs> the stuff, what to do with himself or herself. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> so I do feel as though government entities can have more of an involvement in the operations or the the outcomes that are generated by these different organizations. And I don't feel as though the government should instruct them, hey, do this. But I do feel as though they could be they more can. involved. You understand? I do feel as though yeah. government officials and, and organizations could be more involved with the execution arm of this whole scheme to, to do more, to do better. So I do agree with you. Right. Um, yeah, but 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 where where we differ is that and 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 we say the same things there. You're just saying it in a more eloquent <laughs> time. And, yeah. and, and 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 user friendly, user friendly. <laughs> that is why you would be the person, that's why you would be the person in the meeting and not me. Um, where 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 I find the government um, should go further is why the government cannot instruct or shouldn't instruct. If you are not doing it, then I, government, I'm going to run my own programs for development. Because at the end of the day, at the end of the day, the person that suffers is the youth, is the young player. So the, the, I'm not going to talk about the TFA because I do not know what goes on in Tobago. But the TTFA in Trinidad is doing nothing with development then the government has to step in and do its development. But do its development in any community, any community areas and that sort of thing. Do that um, and, 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 and have a plan. If it shows up, the, the TTFA, so be it. But the youth has to benefit. That's my take on the whole thing. Um, I agree with the outcome, not necessarily the, the journey. <laughs> the destination, the destination, I agree with that. The, 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 the destination, no problem. Destination with the youth, <laughs> so, but the journey, so I for, don't know. For the listeners and the viewers and, and the birdie and Barney, should we try to generate outcomes here? Yeah? <laughs> and just be careful with this Barney guy. Keep him away from nah. sharp objects. They're getting some psychometric tested in Taiwan. We hope it, <laughs> <laughs> hope it all goes well. I, I find it the things, it's so basic, it's so simple to do, but there is no willingness to do it. Because, again, peop, the, the persons who who running these organizations, who are making these decisions, they... They're not armed with the knowledge. And that's okay. A leader doesn't, a leader at the macro level, at the highest level, doesn't have to know the, 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 the ins and outs. You, you but he has to surround them. They're not armed with the knowledge. Yeah, I'm trying, yeah. trying to stop. They're this. fully armed but with ignorance, is what they're armed with. <laughs> <laughs> they're fully armed with ignorance. Armed to the teeth. Um, <laughs> views, views expressed by Brady are not ignorant. All right. Um, yeah, but but they should surround themselves with persons who have that knowledge and can lay out a plan. And I'm seeing time and time again. Wait, look, look, I see a big discussion going on now about a unified league. Who going to play in the league eventually? Five years from now, who going to play? Mm. If we, have, we have any development going on to, 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 to bring any players, or the plan is to bring in all the players from of the islands to play. Because everybody going ahead of us. We're not developing anything. So we, we had to start at the right layers and come up the road. And, and not only just for the sport, in so doing, it's going to deal with some social elements too. It's going to instructure boys and girls' lives. Simple things. So am I a rocket scientist that I could see this, but the people and them who sit down with the purse strings can't see this? Nah, man. I'm getting fed up with this now, mm. honestly. This going on since just after the dinosaurs died. <laughs> this going on since then. When will it end? When will somebody? When will somebody sit down in place? And the selfishness, 
the selfishness of a few permeates the whole thing so that when people come in with plans, I, I sat down and I, I, I listened to Keith Lockloy's plan. It, there, are, there are a number of the things in the plans that, that I felt, you know, were at a superficial level that needed to, to be drilled down. But it was a plan. And it was a plan that was moving us in the right direction. And our plan could be corrected as you go along. You could, you could adjust it. You could measure it and adjust. Mm -hmm. We have no plan now. None. And everybody seem happy with that. Everybody seem happy that we have nothing going on. I don't know. My name is also a trick that you know, Barney. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Sorry. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, to, to, the, to the viewers, um, for the first time we have viewers, um, we want to thank Makan Hislop for joining us today. Makan, you seem like a sensible boy. What do you think of Manchester United? <laughs> hold on, hold on. <laughs> hold on. Hold on. Before we go off into this, before we go off into before we go off into silly season, right? <laughs> because that's oh, what well, our well. question boy. Right? <laughs> Before we go off into that, and and, and uh, we got so caught up in 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 the development and Tobago and thing. Mm. Some um, Macan, you played with Brad Guzman at um at college level. Yeah. How how, yeah. how was he as a teammate? Because he team. look he looks like two steps away. From being a serial killer, <laughs> he, looks very, <laughs> he, he looks very intense. Is what we say now. Um, <laughs> he was actually my roommate, so I know him very well. <laughs> you get much sleep. Like? <laughs> you get much yeah, sleep. You never get up in the middle of the night and see him over here. Um, I mean, I mean, Brad. Um, he's an article man. because he was my roommate. he was my roommate. And besides what you want to try to make him out to be, <laughs> <laughs> I would have none of it. Brad, Brad is my boy. Brad is a real cool fella. Nice. But he is when he comes to competition, very intense. Very right? intense. Yeah. Watch now. When I say hate to lose, hate to make a mistake, hate, hate, hate. I mean. He, um, and because he is big, he's about my height, but being that big, he would train so hard. He would always try to make sure that he is as agile as a shorter person. And he took training very serious. And I wasn't surprised a little bit when it is that he made the move to um, being a pro in England and all these other things. And it, it seemed natural because the kind of qualities that he had, and while we were in school, well, this is this could be gonna make our administration look a lot worse. When he had to yeah, go, man, that 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 is impossible. <laughs> um, that is impossible. Like when he had to go through the different training camps and what and what not, the operation that happened for his selection and his training, I mean, was he'd give you an email was sent to the school. You'd get a duff, couple of duffel bags at the door, FedEx straight to him with all the training gear, ticket. They would, the national team would call the um, school advisor and make sure that all his classes know that he was going to represent the country and to make arrangements and all the operation. He, as a player, had to do nothing. Hmm. But, I mean, transport would come to our door room to pick him up, to take him to the airport, to fly to Miami, to go into a train. <laughs> <laughs> but talking about the individual, uh, Brad. Um, I, I think through he, that system. And anyway, go ahead. No, our, our system. <laughs> we like to involve the parents. So how will this go here? Is we tell mommy, your, your, your son get picked. See about the plane ticket. We go pay you back. I think it's something well, like that. But go, go ahead. Well, like, up there as well, they would also call, text message, and email the parents to let them know what's happening, when, why, how, what. Mm -hmm. What all the flight arrangements, the hotel arrangements, everything will be communicated to everybody. Mm -hmm. All the arrangements will be done ahead of time. So by the time he got notified that he was selected to go for a training camp, everything was already organized in route and whatnot. What not. He didn't, he, if he wanted to, he didn't even have to pack a personal bag because the bag that he got had training everything. gear in camp gear. It even had down to shavers from Gillette and shaving cream. You might 
benefit from that. Anita deal, Anita deal up here. <laughs> <laughs> but kudos to the American um, team management and administration. Uh, Brad, as a as a player, I mean, when I tell you domineering, when you see six foot four, six foot five goalkeeper spread out in the goal, and you see him coming at you, or you, he spread to try to block the angle, you would see about this much, about a, a foot, this much space between him and the goalpost in every direction. <laughs> so <laughs> I think his size really uh, like helped him like stand out as a player, but also along with his size, he had the agility, the speed, the understanding of the game. He communicates very well. Whenever you play with him, you're going to hear him. You're going to hear him all the time. You're going to hear him calling instructions and that made you like that made your game easier because you would know what was happening. Step up, left, right. He was very vocal and he understood the game enough to give you good instructions. So right. with that kind of support in the back of you, you were able to play with a little bit more confident. And then he was that good. Like he was that good. You, you had to score a gem to score on him. Other, otherwise it wasn't going to happen. But all of them things you're telling me, I, <laughs> I can see that from my TV, you know. What I want to know is the last one. The people are serial killer. <laughs> no, I tell you, the guy look, the guy look like the kind of person you don't want to open your door and see. <laughs> right? Actually, it's, it's the opposite. Opposite. Right. Well, that's Easy. that's good. That that's good to know. I, I, yeah. I'm glad to know that. <laughs> yeah. That is a go along with it. Yeah. That is a cool I'm a, guy, except com- competition time. Game right. time, very, very, very... I, I have a partner. I have a, a, a partner I played with back, back in school like that. His name is Scott Rodriguez. On the field, out, off of the field, the nicest fellow. On the field, oh gosh, boy, nah. He, yeah. wants, he, he don't want to lose at all. Yeah, My yeah. next question, um, Coach Berson, who, who you played for, mm-hmm. um, he is uh uh he's almost folklore in in NCAA mm. um standings. How mm. how was he as a coach? How was it playing? And and before we get to that, um you getting your scholarship, how did that come about? Okay, so let's so I'll handle the first the second question first. Um at the point in time, well, I guess I was fortunate or blessed, or I'm not sure how to how to put it together. While I was at Signal Hill, um, during that time, Bertil Sinclair, as well as um, other coaches, played a big role in getting scouts to come to Tobago. So scouts would actually come to Tobago to see um, persons play no one again. I think Bertil Sinclair had a relationship with Ralph Lundy, who coached at yeah. um, Charleston. So a lot of players, had that relationship set up and they were used it whereby coaching school players would then go and play for College of Charleston. We had a number of players who went through that route. Mm. They built the Sinclair College of Ralph Lundy arrangement. So that was one. But in addition to that, so because of that prominence, whenever scouts for different colleges would come to Trinidad and Tobago to look at players, they would come to Tobago and then they would link up with Bertil Sinclair. Brian Cunningham, the recruiter, well, my school is a Division I school, so they probably have a decent budget to do different things. And what happens with most schools, they're the recruiter, and his job, along with being maybe the assistant coach, would be to fly around the world and look for players. So Brian Cunningham was the recruiter at a point in time in um, USC. I was being scouted by, of course, College of Chaps, and he was very upset when I chose to go to <laughs> the Gamecocks. Mm-hmm. Um, a few colleges would have shown interest in, in myself, and um, he and Daniel as well. So Cunningham, Cunningham came to Tobago, and what happened? What usually happens is whenever a scout comes, for however many days he is here, they would put on a few games or they'll come and watch the training session and we'll play a couple of games for them to have a look at the player. And that's essentially what happened. He came down. I think what happened is 
he, along with other coaches, recruiters, came to Trinidad to look for players. But as they was in Trinidad, and it's a $300 flight to Tobago, again, after thought, he said, let me go. I heard about this um, Butchil Sinclair and Tobagoian players being so whatever, whatever, whatnot. And they just used the opportunity to come to Tobago. So they would spend like about, let me say they come here for two weeks or three weeks. They spend about a week or so in Trinidad going to the different schools or put on some kind of scrimmage. And then until end of their trip, they would come to Tobago. So that was my situation. And I must say, uh, boy, the, what is it? the vigor with which <laughs> Mr. Cunningham um, pursued uh, me joining the school, uh, me, it was impressive compared to the other schools who were showing some interest in me. And I guess Charleston kind of had it already booked that I was going to go to that school because the relationship. But the reassurances and the commitment I got from the USC, how everything would be taken care of and how efficient they were with their organization. It was an easy decision for me to choose to go to USC versus Charleston. And we came down, we played a couple of games, I impressed, and then we started to communicate back and forth. Every week he would call me and call my parents and make sure that everything is okay and they're still on board and blah, blah, blah. And yeah, I actually got to the school. Nah, I shouldn't say that. <laughs> I shouldn't say that. <laughs> now is the time. Now is the time. But that's close enough. And I, put, and I put them in trouble. But <laughs> nah, next, day, next day, you know, it's all kind of investigation. Yeah, 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 yeah. The yeah. program gets suspended. <laughs> Do not, yeah, let me do not follow me reasoning. Do not follow me reasoning. <laughs> <laughs> the borders closed, man. The um, Cunningham and um, Coach Burson really did a lot to make sure that that whole transition for me from being here to school was, was a good one. And I had a great experience. When I hear somebody stories of some people who had to go to the States to try to get into college, I have to keep quiet because I'm like, no. That was your experience. I wasn't sleeping on no floor, nowhere. No, no. <laughs> I didn't go by stay by somebody that go to no trial. That wasn't my situation. I think I was lucky because, as I said, there was a system of sorts with regards to Burton Sinclair's relationship with Ralph Lundy, but that was a personal relationship. It wasn't a system. It wasn't like, yeah. it just did. It was just like, if you were part of coaching school and you knew that coach had this relationship with Ralph Lundy, you could make use of that and they work for you a scholarship. Mm -hmm. And I just kind of got lucky that this whole arrangement and the prominence of both the Sinclair's in those days, coaches would come across and take a look at players. So that's how I got there. Mm -hmm. uh, and tell, tell, tell me about um, Coach Burson. Well, you know? yeah. I mean, <laughs> whenever I try to talk about these things, I feel as though I unconsciously tried um, bash our local administration <laughs> and our local coaches. <laughs> so I try to choose my words carefully. Well, let me put it like this. His level of professionalism was evident. I mean, in training sessions, the game was broken down tactically, technically, and psychologi psychologically, whereby you would like we used to do this thing and i always tell people about this to show how organized what my school was i'm not sure if it's the same across all colleges but i believe it is we had a kickoff play i've never heard about that in local football now nah, so, we had that <laughs> so, um, imagine that i left college ages ago and i could still tell you the kickoff play that shows you the level of efficiency that how we went into the game. And after the kickoff play, we had a particular way we would play for the first 10 minutes, the next 10 minutes, and it was broken down. And they would say, if in the first 10 minutes, you're one goal up. So let me see the kickoff play, what can we score? How do you play after that? How mm -hmm. do you think about the game? How do you approach the game? How do your tactics change in time slots in the game? Mm -hmm. It was broken down into, it was, re it was very scientific. Every day we had like, we used to have video sessions, breaking down our own game before another game. We used to, uh, they, they used to, like, it was like some kind of ridiculous science how they would assess the other opposing team. I remember we trained for two days how to counter a long throw Have you ever heard of that kind of attention to detail locally? 
this team yeah. has long, long maturing. So therefore, these are the three different ways you could counter that. And everything was really organized and efficient. And I always felt as do that, you know, like locally, in certain periods of the game, you didn't train for that. You had this figure it out. to suit. Yeah. You had to figure it out. You had to adjust because they're going to come periods in the game. Like locally, do we know without closer eye and know if you're one nil down in the um, last 15 minutes of a first half? How do you go about playing to score back a goal? Could you close your eye and say, the right back has to do this, the left back has to do this, the midfield has to do that, and so on, and so on, and so on, and so on. At the College um, University of South Carolina, Mark Burson, through his different programs, had that level of structure. So whenever it is you as part of the system, you knew what you had to do at different stages in the game, in different mm-hmm. ways, you know, to think about the game. So it left little things to chance. Obviously, in the game, certain things wouldn't happen exactly how you plan it, but because you were so well trained in the different stages of the game and the different time and the different ways and how you have options, you would be on the field and we would be able to problem solve on our own. Okay, this is happening. We've trained for this. Let's approach it in this way. And I think that really speaks to there's no wonder he is a Hall of Fame coach and he's all of that fanciness because he had that approach to the game. So when you were playing under him, unlike other places in the world, any other places. <laughs> 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 you went into more situations in the game knowing how to handle it. You know, um listening to you there, um I wanna say something here that I might regret because <laughs> Don't stop Left now. On. You, all, all <laughs> of yeah, why yeah, change you, now? Why change now? You see, the, you see the other things is other people that I don't want to deal with all the time. This going on related to Lasana, and it, it's very <laughs> nauseating <laughs> having to deal with him. <laughs> when he has any sort of reason to blow his trumpet. So I'll try to couch it in a way that kind of limits that. I'm listening to you talking about Coach Burson there and his level of detail, right? Mm-hmm. And I had the fortune or the good fortune to work with Hayden Martin, who's a Fatima old boy. I attended <laughs> Fatima. He's a Fatima old boy. Yeah. Former St. Mary's no, College. Uh, former St. Mary's Fatima College boy. head coach. Fatima <laughs> former St. Mary's College head coach <laughs> yeah. as well. But go ahead. But 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 but, but he coached that other school that Lasana went to. And um the things that you spoke about there. So while I was coaching Fatima and he was the, the, the technical director, we had a, a kickoff play, right? And we also knew, we also knew, um, like I can remember, for example, uh, no, I can't remember who team it is. They had a particular way that they started their, their, the first half all the time. Mm-hmm. And we were ready for that. Mm-hmm. So they wanted to go long to a wing back from the kickoff, and we were ready to stop that okay. and catch them out of, out of shape. Also, that same thing, but the first 10 minutes, we would press for the first 10 minutes because this is what we wanted to do. Then we would drop back after 10. So when you said, if there's a coach like that, yeah, Cade Martin mm-hmm. is... It, and, and the more I talk and the more, the more I listen to people who have played at higher levels and have played abroad, and the more that I have spoken to, to, um, to coaches who have coached at a higher level, I understand why, and I'm going to say this in jest here, but I understand why St. Mary's <laughs> were able to compete with other with, with other um, schools. They had an all right goalkeeper and they had a, a, a very good striker. Uh, but the rest of them was, all right, it was the coach. And, I, and, and, and it also pains me at the same time that this resource that we have here in Trinidad and Tobago, that that we are ahead of the curve, that we are ahead of plenty of people here, mm-hmm. we're not utilizing for you development. And not necessarily to coach players, you know, but to instruct coaches. Oh, okay. uh, so Mark Besson is a man. Anybody who know anything about NCAA Division I football know that fellow name. Mm-hmm. He's a legend. Mm-hmm. I think... Um, he only had something like three losing seasons, and this man coached for like four, 
this man coach longer than 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 um than Mark and alive at True, true, true. true. For, for forty something years and had mm-hmm. three losing seasons, I think. Right? Yeah. That's ridiculous. That that's unheard of. Mm-hmm. And 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 this is what I want to hear. Yeah. You know your experience. I wanted to hear your experience. You know, having to play, having played under such a story. You like that word, eh? You like that word. Story, you know. But um, on the local scene, let me also <laughs> let me on the local scene. I mean, um, Lata P. I remember when he got his stint at coaching the national team. He tried to implement some of those that approach to the game, where mm-hmm. where players players in particular positions knew their rules and function a little bit better. I know I know he tried. I remember in training session he got frustrated because um, players weren't executing what he was trying to implement. I remember that specifically, and I was. I'm thinking that if it is that we collectively as a team were able to take on board and execute what he was trying to do at the level he was trying to do it at, I mean, it would have changed our style of play just because of that one thing he did because he really tried to, it's like how you said, have a kickoff play and how to play in the first half and how to play in this mm-hmm. and how to play on the wings, how to play in the middle. He tried to implement some of that, and while I liked it and I appreciated it, I don't think that we executed it well to his standards. We, like, like players, because it was different from what we were accustomed to. It was very structured, it was very organized, it was high tempo, high press, and it was different from how national teams were being prepared to, in my different under the different coaches I have played under. And I remember thinking to myself that if we could get this right, it could be a way to win games. Not by, not by if. You'd be like consistently knocking on the door to score goals and consistently defending against goals like throughout entire games. Mm-hmm. I remember... I, I ain't gonna call no names, oh gosh. <laughs> nah, don't do that. Don't, 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 don't. <laughs> Birdie will try to encourage you. To, don't, 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 don't do it. But I could identify coaches that had different approaches to the game that wasn't that specific. There were some that were equally as kind of like specific and tactical and really helped the team play as a unit with one plan. And I will have seen in past times where the national team, even after my time, I couldn't clearly look at the game and see that this team is playing to one plan. And there's been times I've seen it, and I remember one one coach in particular achieved a particular kind of cohesion within the team. We we know who, oh gosh, everybody know who that coach is, oh gosh. (laughs) (laughs) You call it no name. (laughs) We we know who that coach is. Yeah, yeah. yeah. In, in Canada I, right I, now. <laughs> in Canada right now, we know who the coach is. Go ahead, Everybody, go ahead. Knows go ahead. I was going to call him, not me. <laughs> but um, I feel as though that if it is that at all here in Trinidad and Tobago, if we can not necessarily copy an American style or a German style or whatnot, but if it is that we approach the game like it planned out strategic thing and really have that be consistently put out. Um, we have natural ability. We have a lot of things going for us that I feel as though that that structure in our game could really help us. It really could. All right. Well, but, but that, that, that's how the game has to be approached now, you know. That's how everybody approaches the game now. Any, any coach local, foreign, or, or, or anywhere who isn't approaching the game like that um, is behind is behind the eight ball. Bani, the game has to be eh? broken down like that. You huh? did, you did not come in there, eh, Or your breakfast or whatever it is. <laughs> Makan, um, mm. you know, glad to have you on the birdie and Barney. 
I uh, hope mm-hmm. you go on to generate some good outcomes in, 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 in Tobago football. I know you like that term, apparently. And yeah. Um, oh yeah, <laughs> by the way, as you're mentioning well oiled machines. Wait, wait, you said about Manchester United again. You were you were started. <laughs> hold on, hold on, hold on. Macan Macan duck, you see Macan duck the joke, eh? You see that. Don't see you, boy. Don't see you, boy. You the devil's like, like you, you play one character, you score all the thing. Devil's advocate. All the time. <laughs> he good cup once now. Once. He did good cup. I just, I just pointed out, I just pointed out that Macan duck the whole thing, right? That yeah, just, so, Macan duck the whole thing, right? You will be the it will be the first guest we have who outright duck. And the man said, Children, are you on shift here? Yeah? <laughs> <laughs> I'm telling you. <laughs> I really do. Like, I couldn't think of a, of a funny story, and yeah. I think it. Uh, I, 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 I have stories that interest me, but not funny. Yeah. So. yeah, we'll come back to you. But uh, good, to, good, good to have you on again, um, Makan, mm-hmm. and um, good luck over there in, in the, 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 the Twin Island Republic. Of course. Ah, well done, <laughs> yeah. well done. And of course, we, want, we, we absolutely want to, to do more to promote um, the island because it's better for all of us. Like I said, we got some Correct. fantastic players from, from over there over time. And mm-hmm. um, if we want to reach where we did before, we need more. You know, because every yep. team, yeah, you know, in uh, 1991, we'd have had Nigel Davidson and, and, and Hayden James and who the other, and, and of course, Bertle coaching the team, 2001. Boney. No, we not Boney. Sid Gray. Yeah, 2006, we had Sid Gray and so on. Um, nine, uh, 2001, they had yourself uh, and, like I said, Roger Anthony and everything. Who was in the, the, um, the team with less than Paul and so on? Are there any Tobagoans on that team? I qualify for the under seventeen and the under twenty World Cup. That is um, that is um, the silver and M team. Yeah. Mm. Oh yes, Daniel Cyrus. Cyrus. Daniel Cyrus. Yes, Daniel Cyrus. Who again? And Winchester. Winchester. What uh, was he on a team? No, no, he he was not a team. No. Okay, and um, but Caesar. This, Trevor and Caesar. Caesar. Yeah, he would not be on that team either. But and yes, Cyrus would have okay. had to come over to El Dorado. But yeah, look at, look at the quality players we call in. Yeah, look yeah. at the look at the players we call in. You understand? And well, yeah, the show ending. Yeah, those advocates, yeah, those advocates. The show ending. The show ending. The show ending. Let me know. Come on, I've I've breakfast waiting for me outside my door. So let me know. So let me know. Uh, go back there. All right, so let's. But let's... brother, it, it was nice having you. Nice talking to you. Um. As I say, keep keep continue, keep continuing with the work that you're doing over in Tobago. Let's see if we can drive both islands forward hand in hand together and try and make the football better. Um I still in line of the hook with with um the the, the THA taking the, <laughs> the, the development, but that is something we go we will discuss with and flesh out with. Mm-hmm. No problem. All right. No um, problem. well guys, um thank you for the opportunity and to you guys also keep doing the good work you're doing and keeping sport in the ears and I guess now in the eyes of um, your viewers. Well, the eyes is just really me. Eh? <laughs> Why really want to kill a fan? Right? <laughs> yeah, don't have earthquakes in Taiwan. A man had to do a man had to do it. No, despite the earthquake, I'm here. Keep doing the good work, guys, and um, please use this platform and your platform to keep pushing sport forward. You guys do not go always, game. always. And yeah, brother. We could get better. Mm-hmm. And we will only need to come here. So mm-hmm. well done. All right, thanks. Is there a way to stop messages from coming in? Um, if I'm not doing this soon. All right. See if I can pay need my glasses. <laughs> I will need my glasses to find out. Diana's a battle though, you gotta take off. <laughs> no, I listen to two podcasts, the um Shaka Hislop and half or three quarters of the Bertie Sinclair. Will you listen to, will you, will you listen to Shaka for a family thing? Well, He's man, that, that's one of the worst shows. That's the worst. <laughs> right, you're right. You're right. That, that, that's the worst. That's the worst. Yes, that's the worst. I yes. know why you guys say it's the worst because I put some disparaging comments about you propping up Russell Atapiz and then saying, <laughs> <laughs> Oh, my gosh. 
Mann, 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 Lassana don't know how to end. Lassana don't know how to end the call. And that's why we still, you know. <laughs> <laughs> so, so, guys, you forget. Okay, later. God damn it. Oh, hey, bad boy. You know how we crazy. Hey. Turn on all your radio, tell me why you're here. Why you're here. Yeah, yeah. So, 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 go and clear this, yeah. Uh-huh. Some people, what well, we quit, but uh-huh. we just don't care. Because uh-huh. I'm a devil uh-huh. of hot. Like uh-huh. the other uh-huh. young girls. Uh-huh. 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 If it's not no melody, yeah, you know, sing it. Turn it off. Uh-huh. 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 Uh-hu